Hello everyone, this is CJ with Cycletron. Well, today I'd like to talk about whether Indian motorcycles could save Harley Davidson. Now I know that might seem like an odd concept because Harley Davidson is obviously a much bigger company than Indian motorcycles, but I've got several ideas I want to explore to see how this could actually make sense. <laughs> Harley-Davidson is by far the dominant motorcycle manufacturer here in the United States. Even with uh, last year's curtailed production, they still sold 145,000 motorcycles. Now, sales figures from Indian are harder to come by, but they're somewhere on the order of 30,000 motorcycles a year. Harley-Davidson at 145,000 motorcycles last year puts them back to where they were probably in the late 90s in terms of uh, sales volume. It's hard to say exactly how many bikes they'll sell this year, but I would speculate it's going to be similar to what it was last year because they're trying to boost the price of both new and used bikes. And uh, I would expect that production would be very similar. Or sales would be similar around 145,000 units. But uh, you know, Indian has the advantage of being a smaller company in terms of being able to innovate and do things in the marketplace that maybe it's harder for Harley Davidson to implement just because Harley has a longer legacy. I mean, they've been in continuous production since 1903. Indian, as part of their marketing efforts, uh, tries to suggest they've been around since 1901. Well, that's not true. They, they went out in 1953 and only really came back in terms of being purchased by Polaris. There were a few other attempts before then that didn't really amount to anything, but when Polaris bought them a few years ago, uh, that's how they got their current incarnation. But certainly Polaris has done some great things uh, with the Indian brand. Uh, of course, a few years after starting Indian, uh, after they acquired the name, they dropped their victory line of motorcycles to focus on the Indian brand. And they've done very well. Uh, Indian's been known for introducing a lot more technology than, say, a comparable Harley Davidson model might have. Um, a uh, vlogger that I follow, my Motorod, he posted a video recently. I've got the link in the description where he was commenting on the high price, really, of Indian motorcycles. And, and they are. I mean, they're they're no bargain. They're not really cheaper than a comparable Harley. And but I'd say there's trade-offs. There's a little bit more technology on the Indian motorcycles, but the Harleys still have a greater level of fit and finish, in my opinion. But both brands uh, offer great bikes. Um, but it helps Harley that they've got a competitor that is not selling big American cruisers at a steep discount. It helps both brands, actually. So there's, there's a lot of similarity between the two brands that I think, in a way, complement each other. And if you consider Indian sales volume at around 30,000 bikes a year, you know, those aren't all sales coming at Harley-Davidson's expense, in my opinion. I mean, if I'm, I'm guessing here, but, you know, some of those purchases of Indian motorcycles are, are coming from people who wouldn't buy a Harley either. They just like the particular model of, of Indian. And, and they buy it. So if you just use that as an estimate that maybe half of Indian sales, say 15,000 bikes in a given year, actually come at the expense of Harley-Davidson, that would represent a 10% uh, difference uh, to, in terms of what Harley-Davidson might otherwise expect to sell. But it is a significant enough number that it forces Harley to, to innovate. I mean, like I said, uh, India's been known for their ride command. Uh, it seems to be ahead of, of the comparable infotainment systems on Harley-Davidson every by at least two or three years. I mean, it seems like Harley's been trying to play catch-up. I think they've done pretty well here in the last few years. But, you know, somewhat lagging uh, Indian in that regard. Uh, it's interesting to me that neither brand offers a true entry-level bike. Uh, Harley did sell the Street 500 and 750 models. Uh, those weren't 
particularly popular. They weren't particularly cheap either. I mean, seven to eight thousand dollars for those bikes, uh, and they of course since been discontinued. But the smallest uh, bike Indian offers is uh, is the Scout, the smaller version of the Scout. So uh, it's curious to me why neither one offers a true entry level bike. Uh, I recently traded my son's Z125 Pro for this Yamaha MT-03. It's a 321cc parallel twin engine bike, has an MSRP of $4,600, and it's a blast. It's got a lot of technology on it. It's a perfect entry-level bike, in my opinion, for a lot of people. It's got the, the popular naked styling. But, of course, neither Indian nor Harley offers a similar bike. And I think one of the reasons is that Yamaha can get away with making this bike. In, in this case, uh, the one we bought was manufactured in Indonesia. Uh, I mean, would you buy a Harley Davidson or an Indian, even if it was a, a beginner bike uh, that was made overseas, like in somewhere in Southeast Asia, in order to make it uh, more affordable and attractive in, in terms of what an entry-level person could afford to buy? I mean, if a comparable bike were made in the United States, it would probably be upwards of $7,000. Now, I know Harley and Indian both focus on higher margin, you know, larger motorcycles, and, and that makes sense from a business standpoint. But the curious thing to me is it's kind of risky from a long-term business development standpoint because what they're basically saying is entry-level rider, go out and buy your small bike from a metric manufacturer even if the bike's made overseas ride that for a few years and then come back and buy an indian or a harley i mean many of those people won't come back to or there's nothing to come back to they won't they won't be later attracted to either an indian or a harley davidson so uh, some will but but many won't so i don't know if that's a good strategy these days so again would you buy an entry-level bike that was made cheap enough to be attractive if it were made overseas. I'd, I'd be interested in your in your answer to that. Now, I think Indian, with their FTR bike, I mean, it's the naked-style bike, liquid-cooled, a lot of performance. They're in a really good position to introduce a smaller version of this bike. Now, whether they will or not, I, I couldn't tell you. Um, but I think... Indians got a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, more diversity in their product line. Uh, they were ahead of Harley as far as widespread use of liquid cooling. I know that's not attractive to everybody who likes the, the traditional sound and feel of the air-cooled engine motorcycles, but I think it needs to be, uh, liquid-cooled motorcycles need to be a, a part of the product mix uh, in, in today's age to attract younger buyers who are maybe more performance oriented versus uh, more more retro in their interests. Uh, to kind of go along with this point, we uh, got my daughter, uh, and I'll tell you more about this in a future video, we got her a scooter and uh, my wife took her to Cycle Gear to buy a, a showy helmet and uh, she overheard another customer who's about a 20 year old guy talking about how much cooler he thought Indians, Indian motorcycles were versus Harley Davidson. And it got me thinking, you know, is Indian getting more buzz, getting more attention of the younger rider versus Harley? I mean, the bike he loved was the Indian Scout. It's a fantastic looking bike. It's a hundred horsepower. You know, the Sportster only going to be sold in the U.S. now. Um, maybe this is the last year, maybe not, but it's, you know, more traditional air-cooled style, great bike, loads of accessories for it, but it's 57 horsepower. Now, of course, you could mod it and get more out of it, but you're not going to get 100 horsepower out of a Sportster. So these are interesting things to me. Uh, I know Harley has jumped ahead a little bit as far as upping their technology game by uh, coming out with a Pan America. It was launched uh, third week of February, but it has yet to show up in, in uh, at dealers. Supposedly, it's going to start showing up in May, but but we'll see. It's got a 1250 liquid-cooled engine, the Revolution Max engine, 
in some ways, I think it's comparable to the, the Indian Challenger, although the, the styling is altogether different in terms of horsepower. I mean, it, it edges out the Challenger a little bit on horsepower, but it's probably a little under on torque compared to the Challenger. But, you know, would, if, would Harley have introduced the Pan America had Indian not introduced the Challenger? I mean, I think it's an interesting, interesting question. Now, of course, in, uh, Harley Davidson set themselves up to put this engine in other motorcycles. Uh, the 1250 Custom, it was rumored to be released later this year, but interestingly, this bike has disappeared from Harley's website in terms of their future future bike tab. So I'm not sure what's up with that. And of course, over a year ago, they were going to come out with a smaller version of the Revolution Max engine uh, around the 950cc mark. Uh, and of course, they, they announced they were canceling that. Now, I would say Harley Davidson up the game at least relative to, to new technology with the live wire and I've done a couple of videos on this bike I've test ridden it a lot of technology really high tech but they completely blew it on the pricing so you know thirty thousand dollars I don't think they had many takers so I, I wonder what you all think about this idea that there can be somewhat of a beneficial relationship between the two companies I'm by no means suggesting that they are are cooperating on any official level. But the fact that they both companies exist, I think really uh, helps op their opportunities for both companies. So again, uh, please let me know what you think and uh, drop your comments down below and please be on the lookout for future videos. Thanks very much.